Uh, great. Hello and good morning. Welcome. Here we are. Um, welcome Tuesday, the 30th of June. Um, a big hello to everybody. Um, thank you for joining me. This is Keith from IELTS Speaking Success. Very nice to be here. Today, we're going to be looking at the interesting topic of vocabulary. How to learn vocabulary. <clears throat> um, we're going to be helping you out with how to learn new words and how to activate new words and vocabulary. Okay, excellent. Good. I hope you are all well. And I'm just going to put up the title here for those of you. Um, for those of you who are watching this on YouTube and watching the recording, if you like the videos, please do subscribe. Turn on the notifications so that you can find out about all my new videos as I go live and as I upload them. Excellent. Good. Um, so let me just say a quick hello to everybody who's coming in the house. So good morning, Yulia. Hello. Good morning, Elena and Rita, Abilasha, Kautsab. The Korean, I can't read Korean. I'm so sorry. Sasireka, Omnipotent, S. <laughs> He gets everywhere, that man. Uh, Nishi Krad Mohammed, I'm good, thank you. Jerry from Myanmar, nice to see you. Go, great. Guys, it's brilliant to see you and lots of you from Facebook. I know we get most people on YouTube, but a big hello to the Facebook uh, guys. And if you haven't joined my Facebook group, please do. It's IELTS. No, it's not. It's Keith's IELTS Mastermind Community. Very complicated, so you get confused. But just look for me on um, Facebook. <clears throat> so Facebook guys, hello. Beverly, Mohammed, Amy, Makesh and Mike. Great to see you here, Farhad and Inas. Brilliant. So um, I'm very, very well today. Now let me just check in with you. <clears throat> yes. So what we're going to do today, as I mentioned, is vocabulary. As you can see, up here, <laughs> it's back to front. My camera is a mirror. That's a bit strange. I'll have to get used to that. Hmm. And it looks like I've got a lag on my speech. Never mind. We will manage. Indeed, we will. So just as we start on vocabulary, before we do, right, I got quite a lot of questions last time. And I was going to spend just two minutes um, answering some of your questions. There were some very, very interesting ones. Um, so let me look at these questions first and I'll give you a few uh, answers to these. I'm going to share my screen with you. It might make it easier. <laughs> Somebody's on cloud nine because they can see me live. I'm very pleased about that. I'm very pleased you're on cloud nine. OK, so here are some questions from last time. OK, and some quick answers for you. First question, how to get ideas in part two? Well, don't just get one idea. When you're in part two, you really only want one idea. I think a big mistake is many students try and think of uh, this idea and this one and this one. Oh, what about that one? And by the time, you know, the minute has finished, they're still thinking of ideas. Don't just get one idea. Next question. I have many vocabulary, but when I talk, I forget it. What to do? Well, listen, my friend, if you forget it, maybe you don't have it. And I'm going to talk about what we mean by having uh, vocabulary and learning vocabulary, right? I suggest you probably need to activate these words. I'm also going to talk about passive vocabulary and active vocabulary. OK, other questions. Will you give us reading and writing skills? No. <laughs> what do you mean? No, 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 I won't. I'm only doing speaking. But I know I've done listening, but I think listening and speaking are like brother and sister. Um, and I think, you know, vocabulary is key to speaking, as is grammar. So I might do grammar but no reading or writing. Will you always help us? Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, yes is the answer. In the speaking test, does the examiner mark our speaking by the time we speak or he uses the recording to mark later? Well, most times 
Um, they mark you immediately after your test has finished. So as soon as they say thank you, you walk out the door, they write down the score 90% of the time. Because they have more candidates coming and they don't have time at the end of the day to listen back, Okay, how to enroll on your Udemy course? Um, well, you just follow the link. So the link is in the notes, right? Um, if you're thinking, where are the notes? Well, okay, where are the notes? Let me show you where the notes are, right? <clears throat> Here are the notes. After the class, I suggest you go here to my sushi restaurant. <laughs> This is not my sushi restaurant. It looks like it. So after the class, go to IELTSSpeakingSuccess.com up here. IELTSSpeakingSuccess.com. On the website, guys, there's lots of stuff here, right? You can get the recent questions. Uh, you can get tips. You can now even get the Fluency Gym on the website. You can have a look at that. Three episodes. Find out all about the test, different parts of it. But if you go to live lessons, right, this is where you can go and you can download all of the stuff. There seems to be a small problem today with the recent files. They've disappeared, but they will be there. I'll get them later. But you just come here and you download at the end of the class. Super duper, hunky dory, brilliant. Let me come back then to what I was talking about. A couple of questions. Do you need a credit card for Udemy? Um, Yes. How not to freak out on the exam? All right, four things. Visualize, which means you close your eyes and you imagine yourself being successful. Somebody said they've got the test in three hours. Give me a quick tip. Well, my friend, this is your quick tip. Just before the test, 10 minutes before the test, visualize. Find a quiet place. Often the toilet is quiet. But now with coronavirus, I don't know if you can use the toilet. Maybe outside is better. Close your eyes and just see yourself going into the room, sitting down, speaking fluently, smiling. See the examiner beaming and go, oh, what a good candidate. And have this positive visualization. Number two, breathe. When you get nervous... Many people stop breathing, really, and it affects their fluency. So breathe. Just before you walk in the room, smile. You'll be amazed. It changes everything. And enjoy the test. What? Enjoy the test? Are you kidding? Are you pulling my leg? No, seriously, enjoy the test and it'll go great. So those were my tips. So those were the questions, right? A few questions that people had. Excellent. Let me just connect with you all, see how you're doing. Oh, Francisco, you're talking about the masks, right? The, uh, the examiners, and I saw your message. Um, if the examiner's wearing a mask and the student's wearing a mask, that might affect listening and will it affect your score? The, the answer is I don't know, um, but I will try and find out. OK, I will try and find out. OK. Yeah, that's good from Kanjinu. Good advice. How many seconds you can stop your speaking during speaking exam? Oh, like pausing, maybe one or two seconds. Anyway, I will come back to these questions later, right? OK. Um, yeah, some people have to wear masks. OK, so coming back to vocabulary. OK, now I realised last week when we did listening, um, it was so fast. And I realised today I've got a lot to share with you and I would like you to share a lot. So I might break this into two different lessons. So maybe this Tuesday, list, uh, vocabulary part one, and next Tuesday, vocabulary part two, Yay! right? Because I think there's a lot of useful stuff here. And rather than me just power driving through, um, I'd like to involve you a bit more as well, because I think you're going to share a lot with each other. OK, so um, 
and stick around for the riddle. We will do the riddle. And if I forget, just message me around 10.35. <laughs> That's my time, about half an hour to do the riddle. Okay, um, learning vocabulary. I'm going to begin just first of all. I'm going to share with you some of the tips that other students are giving each other. And some of these are really valuable. And I want to share them, my opinion about them, just for a couple of minutes with you, right? Um, so let me, I'll show you and I will talk about them as I'm going through them. Now, I actually just did this earlier. Student tips. I've taken here a selection of some of the ideas you've given me from the Facebook group. Um, not to repeat all of them, but picking out some of them that I liked. Um, I didn't include all of them because I didn't have time. But there's some great ideas here. First, learning the word from some article so that we are clear about their usage. Great. Then trying to use it in day-to-day -day conversation until we get acquainted with it. Nice word, acquainted means until we know it or get, get familiar with it. So I like that tip because it's all about understanding the usage, how to use the word, and then practicing, right? Very important. Learning with Keith, nice. <laughs> then actually, first hear from some native speaker and then see it again in written text. That's the best way for me. Now this is important, right? It's student tips. This is what works for you. It won't work for everybody, but that doesn't matter. So nice idea. Native speaker, I think, or proficient speaker, right? Anybody who's a very, very high level. Um, so to hear it and then see it, that's great. I'm going to be talking about different contexts today. As I practice reading passages, more and more, I also record some new words. So recording words is so important. Collect words from random life, like while you're watching movies, reading a book, or articles, Facebooking. I didn't know that was a verb. Fantastic. Watching videos and so on. Try to follow the comments of native English speakers and get those words if they are new to you. That's nice. Follow the comments because of native English speakers, because in the comments you get some very natural English. Then just translate them and write them down on your mobile. That's very practical. Like it. After one month, you can assess yourself. I'm going to talk about testing because testing your vocabulary is a key part of learning. My top tip is listening to the word before writing it down, just like children learn to talk. I totally agree. Learning two new words every day and try to use them in sentences wherever applicable, simple but effective. That's right. Did you know that research tells us we can learn up to a maximum of seven words a day? So trying to learn 100 words in a day is just not effective. Maximum of seven to learn the word. And I'm going to talk about what I mean by learning words later. Never memorize words. It's much more effective to learn expressions and chunks. Right. So he means never memorize words, right? You need to memorize, but don't memorize words. Memorize expressions and chunks. Chunking. I'm a big fan of chunking. Watch interesting movies with lyrics, then find new words and their meaning. You'll never forget the word as movies will remind you of that word. So that hooking and connecting to a real life interesting um, context is so important. Spaced repetition is really good. Guys, you can try out the Anki app, really helpful for me. There are lots of apps out there. Anki is great. Um, things like tiny cards as well but repeating the word after time again and again until you get it. Great idea. One idea from me, I used to write down the difficult words, not more than five. Hey, he's read the research or she with its meaning on a piece of paper and hung it on the wall for a week at least. <laughs> Wherever I regularly walk inside home, I was reading them whenever passing through them passing by them, I think, unless he's a ghost. In a week of time, I was catching them in mind easily. That is brilliant. And I have done the same. I have covered my house in post-its and notes of foreign words, French and Spanish and Chinese. For me, it really works well, especially at beginner level. 
Um, practice and comprehension is a key, and I totally agree, right? Understanding and practicing is so important. So listen, guys, there are a few ideas, some great ideas, all about um, learning vocabulary. Thank you very much for those. Brilliant. Nice. Hey? Some brilliant ideas from all of the, the guys there. Um, is that unmuted? Yes. Okay. Excellent. Well done. Some really, really good ideas. So today I'm going to talk about all of these things. I'm going to talk about active and passive vocabulary. I'm going to talk about how many words you word learn. I'm going to talk about chunks. Um, i give you some tools and resources to help you learn. Um, and then more next week. Okay, good. So learning vocabulary. Now, one of the key things somebody said is that works for me. So just be clear, there is no one best way to learn vocabulary. Some people say word lists, terrible, don't like them. I don't like them much, but I have used them. Other people love them. It's fine, right? Different things work for different people. It depends on your learning style. It depends on your level, right? If you're a beginner, there are certain techniques which are maybe more useful. Um, if you're more advanced, there are different techniques which are more useful. Um, it can also depend on your mood, right? One day you're in the mood for A, the next day you're in the mood for B, okay? So I would be eclectic. And eclectic, I mean, choose and use different methods, not just one, but use different methods. And the other thing about learning vocabulary, right, is it takes time. Learning vocabulary is like a relationship. It's a lifelong relationship. Your relationship with English words is like your relationship with your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your husband or your wife. It takes a long time to get to know them. And just when you think you know them, one day they say, like my wife, one day says, you know, I never wear red shoes. What? No, I never wear red shoes. I didn't know that. We've been married for 20 years and I, I just discovered something new. I didn't know that. It's the same with words when vocabulary. You can learn them and then like two years later, you suddenly see the word in a, with a new meaning. And go, oh, I didn't know that, right? Like at the beginner, right, level, you learn the word milk. Okay, milk, right? It's a drink. It's a liquid that we drink. Great. And then six months later, you hear the farmer saying, I'm going to milk the cow. Milk the cow? Oh, it's a verb as well. And your relationship with the word milk <laughs> gets closer. Like your relationship with your wife or husband gets closer together, right? And then 20 years later, somebody says, I'm going to milk that opportunity. And you go, milk that opportunity? What's that? That's not milk or drinking. No, to milk an opportunity is to make the most of an opportunity. It's idiomatic. And as your life goes on and you your relationship with words grows, you discover new things every day, right? So your learning vocabulary is like learning your wife or husband. <laughs> or learning your boyfriend or girlfriend, right? Um, it's really true. It takes a long time. And it's not, oh, now I know it, right? <laughs> Never say to your wife, husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, oh, now I know you. You never know them, really. It's the same with English words. <laughs> the good news is it's great fun getting to know them, right? That's the good news. <laughs> Brilliant. So let's um, let me have a look. I'm going to start with a little picture, which might help a little bit, right? Let me share this with you. So what do we mean by knowing a word? Hmm. What do we mean by knowing a word? I'm going to make this a bit smaller to try and get it in here. Um, what do we mean by knowing a word? So 
start at the bottom, right? At the bottom of this picture, your vocabulary, most of it when you're beginning English is passive, right? And as you move up and you get to know words and learn words, it becomes active. You can use it. So passive is that you recognize a word. Maybe you recognize the spelling, right? So you see the word M-I-L-K, for example, right? And you go, oh yeah, I know that word. That word is milk, right? So for example, you can see that. You go, oh, milk. You recognize the word. Or maybe you hear somebody, you're listening to a video and they go, blah, 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 milk, blah, blah, blah. You go, oh, I recognize that, that milk, milk, that's the thing. That's the thing that I drink in the morning. Cheeky drink. So you recognize the sound or the spelling. But if somebody asks you, what do you drink in the morning? And you go, um, oh, um, oh, what's the word? What's that English word? That, that, that white, oh, what is it? M, m, ma, me, right? You can't use it yet. So the first stage is you're you're recognizing the word and but you can't use it. So if you can't use it, you don't know the word yet, right? You then have to move on to the the next part, the active part. And to start using the word, then you start to pronounce it. So you say milk, right? If I go around saying, "Oh yes, I like milk in the morning." You don't know the word because you can't pronounce it. So first you learn to pronounce it, milk, milk. And of course you do that by repeating and listening and repeating, milk. And then you know the meaning. Milk, it's, it's a thing we drink. It's a thing, right? The meaning, milk. And then you start to learn how to use it. So you learn the grammar and the collocation. What do I mean by grammar? Well, most words have some kind of grammar. For example, we talk about milk. Is it countable or uncountable? Right? Now that's the grammar of the word. Let me write this down just to help. Uncountable. Okay. So when we talk about milk, right, we say... It's uncountable because you can't count milks, one milk, two milks, three milks. No, it's like water, right? It's just, it's uncountable. Unless you're in a coffee bar and nowadays we do say, I'll have a milk, I'll have a coffee. So it can be countable. There's some flexibility, but by and large, it's uncountable. That's the grammar, right? The collocation is how to use it. Um, I drink milk. I like milk, right? That's how we're using it, the collocation. So that's the next step is you know how to use it. But the final step, right? The final step is actually using it, right? Because I, every day I work with students who say, oh, I know that word. Yes, milk, I know that word. Yes, um, I and then they say, I like drinking a milk. And I say, is it a milk? And they go, oh, no, 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 it's not. It's it's I like drinking milk. That's right. That's good. Yes. Great. Oh, I know that. And then a second later, they say, that's true. Yes. So, yeah, I, I like having a milk in the morning. <laughs> I like having a milk in the morning. What's happening? They... They know how to use it, but they're not using it. And that last step, I use it successfully, comes through habit and changing behavior. Practice, practice till it's automatic habit. And only then, only then can you say, I know a word or I have a word, right? This is the journey of learning words. And that is just one meaning. That's a milk. As I said, later you'll discover to milk as a verb or idiomatic expressions, right? Okay, excellent, good. I can see lots of you love to drink milk. That's great. 
Right. Excellent. A nice little reminder about the riddle. The riddle's on, on, on the way, my friend. <laughs> okay. So there we've got it. There is a little bit of an explanation about knowing a word and what we need to do to learn words, right? Okay. Brilliant. So let's start here. I'm going to, I'm going to go through my first tip and then I'll do the riddle. Okay. So the first tip is, is probably the most important one, actually. Um, and let me make this bigger. My notes are too small. Here we go. So here's the first tip. <clears throat> go come over here. Um, that is to learn words in context. I'm trying to move it across. Why is it moving? Here we go. It's slightly better. Is it slightly better? Yes. <laughs> okay, that will do. Learn words in context. So again, I think you can make word lists, but don't go and buy a book that has a thousand words and start learning them one by one. My God, that's death by boredom. That's like learning English with a dictionary. Don't do it. Look for different contexts, right? Look for a text, an audio or a video or a written text. And, and as you're listening to that, identify new or interesting or important words. Um, for example, right, these guys have written, this is an interesting book, um, English Vocabulary in Use, it's the advanced level, Michael McCarthy. Now, it's a nice book. It's a little bit dry. Sorry, Michael. I mean, it's great. It's a little bit dry, but I didn't say that. Um, it's a good book. But what's good about this book, right, is if I can show you, right, is they, they organise it by topic. So the news. And then they do it with context. So you look at, you read the text, and you get all the words, the vocabulary, the explanations, and then they explain it to you. But it's all in context, and it gives you the collocation, right? So the context, whoa, is really important. Do you know what I really like as well? Is that they test you. They give you exercises to test you as well. But so that is a source of context, right? That is where you can find vocabulary. You can also find it. Well, you tell me, guys, where do you find your videos, your audios, your texts to learn vocabulary? What do you watch or listen to um, to learn this stuff? What do you watch and listen? Let's see. Let's have a look at your ideas. I think it would be great. And don't, sorry, don't just say YouTube. That doesn't really help us. Give me the name of the channel, a specific channel or a specific book, right? Don't say podcasts. No, give me the name of the podcasts. That's going to be more valuable for everybody. Okay, let's see. Any ideas? Ah, some nice ones coming up. I'm going to share a couple of these with you. Some of these are really nice. Okay, remember, don't say novel. Don't say novel. Give me the name of the novel, right? <laughs> I like this one. Rock and Roll English and my friend Martin. Great website. And they've got some nice stuff, right? Okay, we've got BBC Learning English apps. Some nice stuff there. Dictionaries, hmm. Give me specifics, right? The Animal Planet Channel, brilliant. I love, I tell you what, I don't know if you've seen the BBC Earth or Planet series with David Attenborough. Some fantastic stuff there. And he has one of those lovely, gorgeous voices. You listen to his voice and it's like chocolate. Like, whoa, what an amazing voice. Right, songs. Now, guys, give me the name of songs or the name of a website. <laughs> right, Bloomberg, Game Changer. Brilliant. TED Talks, excellent. Thank you, Juvi and uh, Vishal as well. TED Talks, excellent. Discovery Channel, nice, nice. 
And if this is a good source for reading, absolutely. The 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 economy. It's actually called the Economist, and the HBR, the Harvard Business Review. <laughs> Doctor English. I thought you were going to say Doctor Who. Doctor Who's pretty good. <laughs> Six minute learning, brilliant. Now these guys, Engvid, are fantastic. There's about six or seven teachers there, um, and there's Jade. There's David. There's James, some fantastic teachers, and they're really good source. I totally agree. Um, <laughs> IELTS speaking app, excellent. IELTS, that's the official, that's not me, that's the official um, IELTS one. It's really good. So newspapers, okay. Um, ABC News Australia, British Council website, excellent. Rock and roll English again. Hey, Martin is really popular. I'm going to tell him. The Hindu Daily, nice. So good sources, okay. Watching Gilmer, Gilmore Girls, don't know that one. Mm. Scientific America website, brilliant. So later, I will kind of collate. No, I won't. I will just blow that up. I will collate. That means collate, means to collect a list of those and we'll share them with everybody, right? Because I think that would be quite, quite useful. So learning in context, right? Um, now, the one of the key things here about learning in context is, again, research tells us that we need to see a word in three or four different contexts before we learn it. So just seeing it or hearing it once is not enough, right? That'll take it over here. But when you listen to it in a second context or a third context, it starts going deeper into your short-term memory. And then as you start practicing it, it goes into your long-term memory. Okay. So watching two or three contexts. Um, let me give you kind of a very simple example of this, um, different contexts. So the other day, I was reading an article right on the website, and it's it's a it's a website I really like, and I'm going to share it with you. And uh, let me explain what I did. Okay. Da, da, da. These are different sources. <clears throat> Chrome, come here. Here we go. It's Newzella, Newzella, and if you've not been there, uh, Newzella.com. Let me get rid of this. Newzella.com, um, great website. You sign up for free. It's full of articles at different levels. So I was looking at one about uh, people have made first computer that can hold a debate with humans. It's about AI, right? The artificial intelligence created by, well, IBM have created a computer that can debate against other people. So I read this article. And there was some interesting vocabulary there. Um, but then what I did is I went into YouTube, for example. Let's go into YouTube. And I wanted to find a video, right? So if you go into YouTube and then look for artificial intelligence, and I was looking for the IBM debater. It was called the debater project. So I got the main title, basically. Let's see if I can find it here. And then I started looking for videos. And sure enough, I actually found, look at these different videos on the same topic, right? So I'm going to be listening to similar um, information, IBM project debater. Zooby, zooby, zoo. Excuse me. Zooby, zooby, zoo. zooby, zooby. Stop Aiders, zoo -zoo. and won a live debate. Subsidizing space exploration is like investing in really good tires. It may not be fun to spend the extra money, but ultimately you know both you and everyone else on the road will be better off. Called Project Debata, the system scans hundreds of... The system scans. Okay, so I've put on the subtitles and then 
I'm listening to lots of the same vocabulary I've just read in a different context, right? That is really, really, really helping my learning, having it in a different context, right? Brilliant. So I can read it. I can listen to it. I can even, I can do this. I can go into my podcast um, area, right? If I just want to listen. And I was looking up just before the class, science AI. There are different results for science AI. Look at them all. See the episodes. And there are some interesting things, right? Questioning AI. There's a whole series on questioning AI, research, intelligence. Wow, there's a whole series. So I could actually go and listen just the audio to something on AI, right? So can you see what I'm doing? Yeah, I'm getting a context written, video, audio, and hopefully listening to a lot of the same vocabulary. And that's what's really, really, really going to help me. Okay, excellent. Good. So that's the first tip, right? The first tip there was <clears throat> learn words in context. Now, I'm going to go on to the tip number two. But before I do tip number two, I've got a little riddle for you. <laughs> Hooray! It's time for the riddle. Hooray! <laughs> I love playing with these toys. Great. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready, guys? The riddle, right? So every week I'm going to try, every class, I'm going to try and get a little riddle going. Do I remember what the riddle is? The riddle? The riddle. The tale of today's riddle. Right. Here you go. Are you ready? Hands on your buzzers. I wonder if you will get this. Will anybody get this? Okay. Oh, excuse me. That's quite rude in, in my house. Whenever my I did that as a kid growing up, I go, ah. my dad or my mum would go, don't do that. That's so rude. Right. The riddle. Sorry, I scared you with the beep, 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 beep. Are you ready? What word begins and ends with an E but only has one letter? What word begins and ends with an E, but only has one letter? Mm, some interesting ideas. Interesting ideas. I'm going to share a few of your ideas because they are interesting. So if you've got I, that starts with an E and ends with an E, but that's got three letters, right? Hmm. E, well, mm, not really a word, is it? <laughs> no, no. Here's an, a good try. Eliminate starts with an E, ends in a we, ends in an E, but it only that doesn't only have one letter. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine letters. Nope. Nope, nope. Oh, brilliant. I've got you. I've got you. Ha ha. <laughs> Nobody can get it. Right. Again, if I write it down, oh, one person's got it. One person's got it. There's a lot of ease. No, not ease. A couple of people have got it. It's not this one, but you're very close. But let me show you. Here's the answer. So well done to uh, Jackie and to uh, Anjali and maybe one or two others, right? It's envelope. Begins with an E, ends with an E, and it's only got one letter. The letter inside the envelope. Get it? Ah. <laughs> it's the letter in the envelope. You put a letter inside the envelope before you post it to your friend. Right. Well done, guys. That's it. Thank you. Quite a few of you have got that. I'm so pleased. <laughs> it took you so long to get it. Excellent. Good.
So let's briefly move on to our next tip, right? <clears throat> I'm going to come back so I can find my notes again. Tip number two. Okay. Um, tip number two, I've got to make these a bit bigger, is learning vocabulary by theme or topic. Okay. So let me show you this. Uh, learning vocabulary by theme or topic. So again, rather than having lists of words in alphabetical order, right? Try and learn the words connected to a theme. So take a theme, for example, of um, animals or the city or environment and focus on that topic and make your notes related to that topic. Hello? What's happened there? Ah, back. So make your notes related to the topic. One way to do that is to use spidergrams, um, spidergrams for vocabulary topics. Okay. Um, so what are spidergrams? Let me show you a spidergram. It's similar to a, uh, what do you call that? A brain, a brain, a mind map. <laughs> My brain. It's similar to a mind map. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. Show. Doo -doo -doo. This one. So it's similar to this. Let me. So you take a topic, for example, love. Okay. Uh, we're talking about love. And here we draw little boxes connected to love. It's like a spider's web, right? So you've got words like fiancé, honeymoon, husband and wife, uh, to wed as a verb, the bride, the bridegroom. And then you've got topics around breakup and then maybe divorce, fight, ditch, dump, no love. Um, and others here, feelings then, maybe overexcited, <laughs> maybe addicted to um, beauty, talk about girls. How do you describe beautiful girls? Gorgeous, lovely, sexy, and attractive. Um, verbs like go out with. And so this is a spidergram, okay? And it's a very, very simple way of, of gathering and noting your vocabulary. But also, this is the way your brain works. Your brain, a bit like a computer, stores the information and connects everything. So the key is to connect the new words to something you already know. So if you create a spidergram on love, when you learn new words connected with love, you can add them and you connect it to your existing knowledge about love, for example, right? So that spidergrams are really, really good. You can do that. Earlier, I talked about passive knowledge and active knowledge and you want to activate your vocabulary so the key is to start using it you can use it just making sentences right so on a very simple level you could very very simply just uh, take your mind map over here mm. this one right you could very very simply just take this um, and make some sentences. Um, fiance. I have a fiance. We are going on a honeymoon. I am now a husband. Okay. Or, I mean, that's very, very simple level, right? Or you could, and this is a nice technique, make simple stories. So take your spidergram and practice very, very simple stories using this, right? For example, right? Um, so I met a gorgeous girl and I fell in love with her at first sight. Um, I decided to go out with her and then we got married. We went on a lovely honeymoon. Um, 
I was overexcited. <laughs> no, stop. And then, several years later, we had a fight. She wanted to ditch me, but we worked it out. I seduced her again, and we are lived happily ever after. I don't know, <laughs> but making very, very simple stories is a very effective way of connecting, well, using the words, connecting them into your brain and activating. And it's all about activation, right? So, so, so important, starting to activate all the language. Ooh, <laughs> exhausted there's a lot of stuff going on my friend a lot <clears throat> right i can see some of you now are starting to make your stories <laughs> great nice so making very very simple stories it's a very very simple thing to do right but it's very very effective now by theme or by topic on this i'm going to mention um phrasal verbs because as students you'll be aware about phrasal verbs right now, some people say phrasal verbs you should learn as a list and other people say as a topic. So if we take the word cut, right? Cut with the preposition cut off is a phrasal verb. But we can also have cut. What else can we have? We can have cut in. Cut To cut in is to interrupt. Cut down, right? To cut down a tree. We're talking about deforestation. Cut down on is a phrasal verb, which means to reduce. Cut down on your smoking, to reduce. Um, cut away is also one. Cut away the grass or that's in the way. Cut away, cut off, cut in. Cut up, if you're cutting up a piece of paper, Right. So you've also got cut up. So you could learn the list of all the cut phrasal verbs. You could. And some people do that and it works well. But I think it's better to learn by topics. Right. Learn the phrasal verbs by topic, because I just think it's more practical. So, for example, if we were talking about the topic of love, what are the different phrasal verbs we could use? Well, on the topic of love, we said fall in love with, right? Um, fall out with someone. That means you have an argument and you're not together. To so fall out with. Make up with. After the argument, you become friends. You make up with them. And I think this is just much more practical to learn around the topic, right? Now, you may be thinking, well, how do I find these, right? Well, there's different things you can do. You can go to the good old Google, right? And you can search there. Um, so let me show you. Hang on a minute. Where is my Google? Da, 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 da. I've lost it. <laughs> it's gone away. Oi. Okay. Let's go into let's go into Google. Um we could look for phrasal verbs about love, for example. You could go here. I find images are pretty good, right? Images you can see straight away. So just do phrasal verbs about love or whichever topic. Sorry, you can't see me. Sorry. So let me just go back just to make that clear. So I've typed in phrasal verbs about love, right? I type that into Google. Go into the images because I think images is much more practical. And you can see very quickly different phrasal verbs, phrasal verbs about love, right? So maybe, for example, you want to look at this one over here. Um, check out, hit on, ask out, fall for, make up. That's what we had, make up with. And learning these by topic, for me, is much more useful 
especially then if you're going to make a story about it, right? Excellent. So that's something you can do very, very, very easy. So that's my approach to phrasal verbs. What about you guys? How do you guys learn phrasal verbs? Do you prefer lists or topics? <laughs> yes. Okay, some good questions coming up. Let me address some of your questions. Oh, that's in Russian. I can't read it. Sid, thank you for your story. Very nice. Sulfia, thank you for your comment. What about learning the idiom? Learning the idiom. Hmm, learning the idiom. Learning the idioms. Um, so this is this question. What about learning the idioms? Hmm, hmm. There are different ways you can learn idioms. But again, the key is context. So there's no point. I think hmm, you can buy books, right, that have all the idioms, but it's out of context. I think as you're learning through context, through listening to maybe British Council or YouTube or TED Talks, you will discover some idioms as you go. Make note of them. The idioms are at that higher level of learning. Do you remember that picture at the beginning? Passive, active, knowing how to, the grammar and collocation. The higher level is the idiom. Um, I will talk more about idioms um, maybe next time as well. But I think it's just part of your learning rather than a separate part. So a lot of you prefer topics. Some of you like the list. Yep. Yep, topics. Both of them. Well, nice. That's a nice answer. Why not both of them? Absolutely. Topics and practice with my husband. Excellent. It's a nice idea. <laughs> Francisco, I try to avoid phrasal verbs as much as possible. Some are hyphenated, some are not. Um, I don't think any phrasal verbs are hyphenated. They're, they shouldn't be hyphenated if they're a phrasal verb. But they are an essential part of your speaking especially natural spoken English. We don't use them as much in writing, but for speaking, they really are very, very useful. Amila, hands down with topics. Hands down means absolutely, completely sure. Topics, great. Um, Susan, <laughs> nice one. I like it. Yes, watching the IELTS speaking success with videos. And they are a great topic, right? If you look at all of our videos from the live classes most of them are in topics we've talked about globalization about cities animals toys all sorts so topics i think are a really really good way to do it okay great now then let me move on um to cover one more thing for today i knew i would never cover everything <laughs> okay um the next one is this one is as you're learning words, really important, I think, is to be um, making a note. Okay, let me share this with you. So as you're learning, make a note of new words. I think it's really important. You can see them, you can practice them, but at the start, make a note, whether it's writing or in an app or typing it. Um, but make a note of them. And there are some key things you should note. These, I think, are some really useful tools, right? Osdic is a collocation dictionary, um, which I will show you in a minute. Whoops. So this is a collocation dictionary, which is really good. This is a, so the word, if you want the word in a phrase, like how do I use it, then phrase it is the tool for you. It's really, really useful. And dictionaries, I like the Collins Dictionary. They're all good. Well, most of them are good. Whether it's Oxford, whether it's Collins or any of the others, that they're, they're all pretty good. Um, but let me show you these in action, a little bit how you can use them. Okay, so make a note of words. 
BBC Audio Zone. Ah, I was going to show you an example here. Hang on. BBC Audio Zone. Yeah. Okay. Da, 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 da. So my example is, I'm going to share with you. It was the British Council. It was the British Council website. Let me show you where I am. Um, it's not actually here, but the British Council website, General English, right? They have videos. Or they have a thing called Audio Zone. So for listening and for text, you've got the Audio Zone. Done by, well, topics, right? Music, living in London, cities, music and social media, keeping fit. So these are some nice contexts for learning. Um, living in London, for example. So you can listen, which is great. This recording is from the British Council. Hooray! But there's the nice thing, right? You've got the transcript. Hi, Luke. Thanks for talking to me today. So as you're listening, you can learn. And then let's take an example, right? Let's imagine I'm listening to this. Hi, Luke. Thanks for talking to me today. Hi, Joe. Nice to meet you. Um, what would you like to talk about? Um, I'm going to talk about living in London um, and the kind of love-hate relationship I have with it. And I assume The love-hate relationship I have with it. That's interesting. I've not heard that before, right? Love-hate relationship. So let's imagine you want to make a note of that, right? The love-hate relationship. So what you'll do, I imagine, is you'll have a notebook, most likely, hopefully, right? You'll have a, a notebook and you'll be writing in something like this. Dan, Dan. Uh, a relationship. So when you're making notes, make a note of what it is. Is it a noun or a verb or an adjective? Okay, we're looking at relationship and then the adjective, a love-hate relationship. Make a note so you know if it's an adjective, right? This is part of the grammar of the word. And then the definition, I love and hate something or someone. So definition, right? Maybe you want to go to the Collins Dictionary that I mentioned, right? So if we try the Collins Dictionary, where are you, my friend? Let me show you. Here we go. Let's go to the Collins Dictionary. Um, it's ever so slow. Maybe I've got too many things open. The Collins Dictionary, love, hate, relationship. It is there. Brilliant. What does it mean? Do you know why I love Collins, right? It's because... Love, hate, relationships. You get the audio. They give you the grammar, so it's a countable noun, right? Relationship, countable noun. They give you examples. I have a love life. If you have a if you have a love hate relationship with someone or something, your feelings towards them change suddenly, and often from love to hate. Okay. Um, you may also like. It sounds like Amazon, right? <laughs> So it gives you the definition. Excellent. Good. We can get rid of that. Um, we can come back to our notes, hopefully. So you've got your definition. And then what you might do is think, OK, what are some other adjectives I could use with relationship? Right. Other adjectives. And how do I how do I use relationship exactly? So go to Osdick. Great name, right? Let's put in the word relationship. Relationship. So this gives me collocations. So it will give me, with the adjective, we can talk about friendly relationship, harmonious relationship, a broken relationship, right? Lots enduring relationship, a brief or casual relationship. Maybe if you're not very serious, but it can also give you the verb. So we say to have a relationship, right? Or to enjoy a relationship. 
and it gives you some examples. They enjoyed a close working relationship. The school has a very good relationship with the community. So it's giving you examples as well, right? Which is great. Enjoy, have, begin, build. So I can take some of these, right? I don't want to be taking too many, to be honest, but I can take some of these um, that I think are interesting or useful and I can add them to my notes. Harmonious, right? So my notes, if I put them all on one page, might help. So, and I just make a note just to make it clear for myself that these are adjectives. Harmonious, healthy, fragile, and we say to have a relationship as a verb. And I can enjoy, build, break off. So I just made a note of some, right? So this note taking is really, really important. And also, right, you probably want to add some examples or maybe just one example. Either write it or at least speak it out. Let me just show you phrase it because I think phrase it is quite useful for this, right? Phrase it. Phrase.it. This is the one, right? Phrase it. A relationship, for example, 54,000 results. Holy moly. Seriously? Um, but what you get here is a feeling for the kind of context, right? Um, professional relationship, that kind of relationship, your relationship, overall relationship. Uh, you just get different examples, right? That sours a relationship, right? Most folks are not aware is the relationship between obesity and cancer. Oh, the relationship between this sickness and that sickness. So you're learning all the time. And this may, it's nice just to get some extra examples on how to use it. Okay, so that is phrase it. So with your notes, then you're able to do the following. You're able to identify the word, the grammar, the... Uh, definition, some other useful collocations, right? Collocations are so important. Again, the grammar, to have a relationship, enjoy, build, break off, and then make a phrase, right, with it, right? I have a good relationship with my students, for example, right? There's an example. Okay, so that's note-taking, really important. Um, and you can see here, if I go back, do you remember this? So what we're doing here, we're starting to move up. We've gone from the meaning to the grammar and the collocation to knowing how to use it, right? So we're starting to know how to use it. It doesn't mean we can use it, but... The note-taking is an important step on moving and getting there, right? Excellent, good. So, so far, we've looked at understanding uh, what we mean by learning. Um, we've looked at learning words in context and the importance of that, and you've suggested some interesting sites. Um, we've talked about the different contexts. So read it, see it in a video, listen to it in audio, right? Really important. As I mentioned in the introduction with the student tips, probably five or six words a day is enough, really. We've talked about learning by topic or theme and those spidergrams that can help you, making stories, right? Phrasal verbs, we've talked about maybe using both lists and uh, topics for phrasal verbs. And finally, we've talked about making a note of new words such and using tools like dictionaries, collocation dictionaries, phrase dictionaries, which can all help you 
identify how to use the word correctly. Right. That is a lot for today. There is a whole bunch more, actually, which we're going to carry on with very much around activating the vocabulary that you're learning. So I'm going to do that next week because, surprise, surprise, we've run out of time. But before we finish, let me just touch base with you all because I'm sure you might have a question or two before I finish up. Let me just have a look. I love it. You're all looking for speaking partners. This is a great forum to look for a speaking partner. Why not come and find people here? It's a great idea. Right. Um, this is an interesting question. Kishla, I'm not sure what you mean. IELTS changed the process. What's your take on this? What's my opinion? What's your take? Which process are you talking about? I'm not sure they've changed the process. Are you talking about IELTS indicator or something else? I'm not sure. You'll have to clarify, Kishli. Great. Okay, uh, Mariku, yes. Have you heard about the golden lists method? Does it work? Um, so I've known a couple of students who've tried this. Um, they did it for about a month. And then they stopped doing it. I think one of them because it didn't match their personality, right? Some people are very scientific and systematic and they like analyzing. And this method was quite good for that. Some people are quite creative and artistic and like things to be not systematic. So this didn't really work for them. So as I said at the start, it, it may work for one person, but not for another. Um, but I have seen it. I've tried it um, and it, it was okay. It works for me. It's very systematic. Yeah. Okay. A final question or two. Any, any burning questions? Why don't you develop your Udemy course? Again, Nariman, I'm not sure what you mean. Do you mean make it bigger? I do. Every four months I add to it. I'm not sure what we mean there. Emmy, how can we use a context clue? How can we use a context clue? So the context clue is where the context helps you understand the meaning of a word, right? Um, now that can be, sometimes it's a visual clue, like you can see two people stud in the farm, talking about milking the cows and you go oh milking the cows something to do with farming cows so it could be a visual clue but also sometimes um, other words in the sentence can help you right if i say i'm if or if you no, if i'm saying and you're listening right i'm gonna milk this opportunity and make lots of money so you're thinking the context, what's he talking about? Opportunities, making money, right? So I can guess milking is something to do with here, making money maybe, or doing something good. Milking an opportunity, what do we do with opportunities, right? Use your knowledge of opportunities. We make opportunities, we take opportunities, we make the most of opportunities. So we can start to guess. Maybe milking is to take, similar to take an opportunity, right? So we're, it's a bit like a puzzle. You're putting the pieces together to make the picture. And you're using maybe grammar or vocabulary or something else to help you guess the meaning. That's the context clue. Very, very important, right? When you don't understand a word, your first thing is not the dictionary. Don't go and look it up in the dictionary. The first thing should be context clue. Try and guess the meaning. Look before the word, look after the word, look at the context, try and guess the meaning. And then if it's important, go and look it up in your dictionary. I'm pointing at my dictionary. Go and look it up. If it's important, if it's not that important, skip it. Keep going, right? 
There's nothing worse than reading an interesting article and then stopping every second to check the meaning, right? There's something wrong there. Either you're checking too many words, don't, or the article is far too high for you and then you need to find something easier. Okay, great, nice. Um, mm. <laughs> Avanti, you're having your IELTS speaking on Sunday. Please uh, share some last minute tips. Go back to the beginning of this video and I gave you four crucial tips for your speaking test. Go back and watch it. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, final one. Yes, the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Fantastic. Great dictionary. Very, very good. Absolutely, I would use it. Okay, guys, I will go later and check if there's any more um, any more questions coming up. But I am going to finish because it's quarter past 11. My God, it's too late. Okay, thank you very much for joining me today. Um, I've really enjoyed it. I hope you've picked out or picked up, picked up, right? Pick up to learn. I hope you've picked up some new ideas, um, some new tools and you, that you can start using in your learning of vocabulary. Next Tuesday, we'll do part two, some more ideas about activating vocabulary. Thursday, the day after tomorrow, we're going to be looking at some more questions, uh, IELTS questions, and doing a bit of practice. Um, come and join the Facebook group if you haven't. And I will also there be telling you more the day before. We'll be sharing some questions and some activities that you can do. And also after the classes, I usually give you an activity to do so you can practice more. Brilliant. Good. So listen, guys, thank you very much for joining me. Have a fantastic day. Go and learn some new words, but only four or five, not too many. Brilliant. Um, that's it time to go. Take care, my friends. Adios.